ओम ज्ञान तुमरंदशाकया चक्षुन्मीलिमेन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्ट स्थापित मे न भूतले स्वयं रूपा तदा मह्यम ददाती स्वदंतिक वंदेहम श्रीगुरोन श्रीयुता पदकमल श्रीगुरोन वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप सागर जात सगन रघुनाथन्वित तम सजीव साद्वैत सवदूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सगन ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानो सुते देवी प्रणमा हरिप्रि वाचा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण सो वील बी कंटिन्यूइंग आवर रीडिंग ऑफ भगवद गीता चैप्टर सिक्स श्लोक नंबर फिफ्टीन युंजने सदात्मा योगी निनस शांति निर्वाण परमा मत्संस्थागछति thus practicing constant control of the body mind and activities the mystic transcendentalist his mind regulated attains to the kingdom of god or abode of krishna by cessation of material existence purport the ultimate goal in practicing yoga is now clearly explained yoga practice is now uh, is not meant for attaining any kind of material facility it is to be enabled by cessation of all material existence one who seeks an improvement in health or uh, aspires after material perfection is no yogi according to bhagavad gita nor does uh, cessation of material existence entails once entering into the void which is uh, only a myth there is no void anywhere within the creation of the lord rather the cessation of material existence enables one to enter into spiritual sky the abode of the lord the abode of the lord is also clearly described in bhagavad gita as that place where there is no need of sun moon or electricity natat bhashayate suryo na sashanko na pavakah yat tatvan na vartante tadam paramamam all the planets in the spiritual kingdom are self illuminated like the sun in the material sky the kingdom of god is everywhere but the spiritual sky and the planets there are for call param dhama or superior abodes so here we see that uh, um, by cessation of material activities uh, you know we will be able to reach to the spiritual abode this is one of the things that is mentioned here a consummate yogi who is perfect in understanding lord krishna as is clearly stated here in by the lord himself much chitap mat machita mat pra, uh, paraha mat tanam can attain real peace and can ultimately reach his abode krishna loka known as goloka vrindavan in brahma samhita it is clearly stated goloka eva nivasyatya kilat bhutah so the lord is also residing always in his abode uh, called goloka is the all pervading brahman and the localized paramatma as well as uh, as well by dint of his superior spiritual energies no one can reach the spiritual sky vaikuntha or enter into lord's eternal abode goloka vrindavan without proper understanding of uh, krishna and his plenary uh, plenary expansion vishnu therefore a person working in krishna consciousness is the perfect yogi because his mind is always absorbed in krishna's activities savai mana krishna padara vindayo um, in the vedas also svetashvatara upanishad 38 we learn tat uh, tam eva vidit pal mrityum eti um, one can overcome the path of birth and death only by understanding the supreme personality of god at krishna in other words perfection of the yoga system is the attainment of freedom from material existence and not 
some magical jugglery of gymnastic feats to be full innocent people so one thing is very clear that uh, no mat uh, it is uh, very nicely put here mat chitta mat paraha mat sthanam so it's like uh, one who is uh, constantly meditating on the supreme lord no mat chitta mat paraha so or uh, narayana para sarve narayana para or uh, like that so this is all like one who is fully krishna conscious no such people enter into the spiritual abode so it is mentioned that uh, no if we want to enter fire we should also be fire so without we being fire we cannot enter into fire so because if we have to enter into goloka vrindavan or to get uh, closer to krishna then we have to be as pure as the supreme lord and how we will get pure like that by association of the supreme lord right so that way like we have to uh, progress towards that direction okay so now let's go to the 16th shloka nas natyanas natyashnatas tu yogosti na chai khantam anasnatah na chhati swapna shilashya jagrato naiva charjuna there is no possibility of one's becoming a yogi or you know if one eats too much or eats too little sleeps too much or does not sleep enough okay this is all regulations now coming in so it's nice uh, this and next shloka is very nice uh, very very practical for our application purport regulation of diet and sleep is recommended here in for the yogis too much eating means eating more than uh, is required to keep the body and soul together that means to be alive there is no need for men to eat animals because there is ample supply of grains vegetables fruits and milk such simple food stuff is considered to be in the mode of goodness according to bhagavad gita animal food is for those in the mode of ignorance therefore uh, those who indulge in animal food drinking smoking and eating food which is not first offered to krishna will suffer sinful reactions uh, because of eating only polluted things bunjate ve aham papa e pachanti atma karanat so those who prepare food for their own sense pleasure no they have to um, like uh, suffer the sin no they only actually eat uh, the sin so it's very nice that uh, the basic food stuff the simple food stuffs like grains vegetables fruits and milks are there so then um, why there is need to uh, do any animal killing and uh, here it's uh, it's put like animal food drinking smoking and eating food which is not first offered to krishna so that means like uh, eating directly bhoga is also like quite simple uh, it's as good as like uh, you know either animal we kill and eat or uh, the plant we kill and eat so it's all the same you no know, we uh, being a vegetarian is not very great thing so one has to be uh, one has to offer things in sacrifice and then you no know, consume so this is the procedure and this is the way our uh, you know previous generations would live and um, directly honoring or directly uh, taking bhoga is like uh, very very uh, you no know, sinful so this is all the effects of kali yuga and that too uh, probably in last one or two generations all these things have happened otherwise before that people would in any nice cultured family they would have this uh, you no know, sacrifice they would have some form of bhoga offering and then they would only have prasadam so that's the uh, Uh, cultured way so now even in cultured families even in brahmanical families like no this culture is gone so it's like uh, no gore kaliyuga it's almost like the kaliyuga is like very very uh, no acute no right so okay um anyone who eats for sense pleasure or cooks for himself not offering his food to krishna eats only sin one who eats sin and eats more than is allotted to him cannot execute perfect yoga it is best that one eat only the remnants of food stuffs offered to krishna a person in krishna consciousness does not eat anything which is not first offered to krishna therefore only the krishna conscious person can attain perfection in yoga practice nor can one who artificially abstain from eating manufacturing his own personal process of fasting uh, practice any yoga so the krishna conscious person observe fasting as it is recommended in the scriptures he does not fast or eat more than is required and uh, uh, he is thus competent to perform yoga practice 
So we should not just like that cook up our own fasting this once. No, we should fast only on Ekadeshis and uh, some appearance and disappearance days of great Vaishnava Acharyas and things like that. So otherwise we should not uh, no, simply invent our own fasting. So that is also not very good. Uh, so eating or not eating is not a great thing. Eating and not eating based on the scriptural in instructions. That is important. Okay. So one who eats more than required will dream very much while sleeping. And he must consequently sleep more than is required. One should not sleep more than six hours daily. One who eats, uh, sleeps more than six hours out of 24 is certainly influenced by mode of ignorance. A person in mode of ignorance is lazy and prone to sleep a great deal. Such a person cannot perform yoga. Right? So this is very uh, nicely mentioned that uh, uh, if, uh, if a person is sleeping a lot, so you know, that means uh, the mode of ignorance will act upon him. So it is an exposure. Sleep is an exposure to mode of ignorance. And um, you know, by the exposure of mode of ignorance, our uh, capacity to perform yoga you know, will reduce. So we should not do that. And um, you know, anyone who is serious about spiritual practice should uh, see that how, to, uh, how we are uh, utilizing our time nicely. And the one very good uh, tip for this is uh, when we chant the holy names of the Lord nicely, legibly and uh, with a lot of absorption and focus, so then automatically we will see that our sleep, sleep requirement is reducing because uh, you know, we will uh, buy the focus uh, on the holy name. So initially it may be difficult. It is, uh, it is quite difficult to uh, get the initial card. But then um, when we do that, when we uh, take, when we have the practice of doing it, over a period of time, our sleep requirement actually reduces. And eating and sleeping both has a direct correlation. One who eats more has to sleep more. So that's for sure. So, and what is more and what is less is depends on individual. So one has to take a call individually. Uh, so it's, it's based on uh, one's capacity to digest and one's uh, prakriti. So that's completely different for different people. So, but then um, one who eats more uh, according to his capacity, you no, know, he has to sleep more. So that's uh, natural, you no, know, cannot be avoided. Okay, so if we are uh, having more of mode of ignorance, it's very difficult to uh, you know, practice yoga, practice uh, anything stably. You know? So we should uh, try to uh, see that you know, our uh, uh, sleeping and eating requirements reduce so that uh, we may situate in mode of goodness. You know? we, uh, we sleep and eat as much as it is required and not more or not less also. Text 17. Yukta hara viharasya, yukta chetasya karmasu, yukta svapnava bodasya, yoga bhavati dukkaha. Okay. He who is regulated in his habits of eating, sleeping, react, recreation, and work can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. So, like uh, for driving out you no know, material pains, we need uh, definitely yoga system. So, but then. Um, no, if it is accompanied by regulated eating, sleeping, recreation and work. Eating and sleeping, directly we can understand. What is this recreation and work? Even work has to be regulated. Even our recreation has to be regulated. Nothing can go beyond bounds. We should understand that we are there in the material world. We are caught up in the whirlpool of material world. Right? So it is, it is not a safe place. It is not a nice place that we are there in. So it is a place of... Um, a misery it's a place of uh, it's a foreign land that we are in and uh, it's kind of a diseased condition so in diseased condition everything is measured everything is regulated right so but then in the healthy condition a person eats a little more or you no know, does something it doesn't matter so but then in the diseased condition everything is measured so we are in diseased condition in the material world and once we get back to the spiritual world everything is unlimited there so there, you no know, anything and everything we can do, we will not be affected. But right now we are diseased. You no, know? what is the symptom of the disease? The symptom of the disease is we have a material body. You no, know, that that is the symptom of the disease. And uh, till the time that this, this disease is there, we have to measure everything. We have to regulate everything. Right. So this is something that has been killed in the Kali Yuga. That uh, being in a regulated way. 
no nothing is regulated so everything can be done unlimitedly no unlimited internet is provided unlimited uh, what is that uh, entertainment is provided unlimited food is provided no nothing is regulated right so that's the main problem of kaliyuga that uh, you no know, sleep is uh, unregulated you no know, everything is unregulated so it's it's a major problem so people cannot perform yoga system any pro- any yoga system to perform it requires you no know, these stabilities you no know, these things have to be regulated you know in the third chapter itself uh, krishna mentions when he says that uh, uh, this the lust sits on mind intelligence and the senses and one have to regulate these three things you no know? so that is the same thing again you no know, more detailed way it is coming here uh, in, in the in the dhyana yoga chapter so this regulation is really really very important okay purport extravagance in the matter of eating sleeping defending and mating which are demands of the body can block advancement in practice of yoga right as far as eating is concerned it can be regulated only when one is practiced to take and accept prasadam sanctified food um lord krishna is offered according to uh, the bhagavad gita 926 vegetables fruits flowers grains milk etc patram pushpam phalam toyam right uh, in this way a person in krishna consciousness becomes automatically trained to accept food uh, not meant uh, automatically trained not to accept food not meant for human consumption or not in category of goodness as far as sleeping is concerned a krishna conscious person is always alert in discharge of his duties in krishna consciousness and therefore any unnecessary time spent uh, sleeping is considered a great loss avyartha kalatvam no vyartha means uh, it's uh, uselessly spent vyartha or uh, it's it's like just kind of nasht ho gaya no that is like vyartha so avyartha means like uh, the time should not be wasted avyartha kalatvam a krishna conscious person cannot bear to pass a minute of his life without being engaged in the service of the lord therefore his sleeping is kept to minimum his ideal in this respect is shila rupa goswami who was always engaged in the service of krishna and who could not sleep more than 2 hours a day and sometimes not even that so shila prabhupada used to do this and he also used to sleep only for 2 hours a day you no know, sometimes he would go to sleep by 9 10 o'clock and then 12 1 o'clock he would get up and then he would start writing these books all these books were written in the night you no know, shila prabhupad used to travel and preach all over the world in the daytime and in the night wherever he goes you no know, whatever time he reaches there he immediately adjusts the clock according to that local time and then you no know, starts his clock starts there and then uh, he just uh, you no know, even if there is no jet lag and things like that it would not affect him or even if it affects him that he would not you no know, deter from his schedule he would be pakka on his schedule and he would just get up and uh, he would start writing you no know, he would start writing the books and in the morning again you no know, he would uh, uh, like uh, uh, you no know, start with the mangal aarti and all the programs and everything so it was like uh, the young american people like who were joining the movement at that point in time they were completely astonished to see such a person you know who would require only 2 2 hours or 3 hours of sleep and then um, you no know, going on and on and on with uh, so much volumes of service so what all shila prabhupada accomplished in that 12 uh, 12 years practically first 2 years were useless it's only 10 years that shila prabhupada could able to preach now he wrote all these books now we can uh, see how many uh, days it is taking for us to even read these books so he wrote all these books volumes and volumes of books and then um, he uh, traveled and preached all over the world he initiated close to 5000 disciples he opened 100 temples you no know, 100 plus temples and he set up farm communities gurukul what not like no it's like <laughs> it's like a wizard you know it's it's not it's unimaginable what he did in those 10 years and that too in the advanced age of 70 plus you no know, 70 it is done in the age between 70 to 82 you know where uh, people would become almost invalid right so that's uh, that's the age in which uh, you no know, he actually did this uh, just a minute uh, i'm just getting up hari krishna so 
Yeah, so we were uh, discussing on this aspect of how Srila Prabhupada used to have his uh, intense schedule. So, you know, this uh, Prabhupada is telling our uh, ideal in this uh, case is uh, Rupa Goswami, right? So he would sleep only for two hours and then um, he would work very hard, uh, like for uh, writing all the, uh, you know, nectar of devotion, nectar of instruction, so many books, you know, they had written. So it's all, um, you know, uh, this is the uh, way the parampara is. And uh, this is the way that Krishna conscious practice is. So as we progress in our Krishna conscious practice, gradually the eating, sleeping and mating and defending all these things reduces. You know, all the material needs reduces gradually. Right? Okay. And the Thakur Haridas would not even accept prasadam nor even sleep for, for a moment without finishing his daily routine of chanting with his beads 300,000 names. That means uh, Haridas Thakur would chant 192 rounds and uh, if without finishing the 192 rounds, he would not take even um, food, no, anything. He would not accept anything without uh, chanting his rounds. So it's like practically 24 hours it used to take, you know, for him to finish, like it just, he would take something little bit and then the next day's work will start. Right? As far as work is concerned, a Krishna conscious person does not do anything which is not connected with Krishna's interest and thus his work is always regulated and is untainted by sense gratification. So by being engaged in Krishna's service, we will be untainted by sense gratification. Right? Since there is no question of sense gratification, uh, there is no material leisure for a person in Krishna consciousness. And because he is regulated in all his work, speech, sleep, wakefulness, and all other bodily activities, there is no material misery for him. Right? Yoga, Bhavati, Dukkaha. So like the Dukkha is finished. Okay, text 18. Yada vinit, uh, viniyatam chittam uh, atman yeva uh, atman yeva vatishtate nispriha sarva kame pyo yukta iti uchate tada. Okay, so there is a question. Uh, explain more about uh, extravagance in the matter of defending how it should be uh, uh, for a devotee. So defending means uh, where it is necessary to be defended. So we have to do that, especially when it is coming uh, a challenge about the Lord or the philosophy of Krishna consciousness is challenged. So then uh, we take the opportunity to defend ourselves. So, but then if it is about uh, oneself and uh, you no know, things like that, so we would just accept even we are at fault, you no, know, we accept, okay, fine. Uh, like, for example, Rupa Goswami, as Prabhupada is mentioning, you no, know, he's our ideal. Uh, so, once a Digvijay Pandit, he came and uh, he wanted to, uh, he had one of our uh, great uh, uh, people in all over the, uh, all over uh, India. And then uh, he wanted to debate with uh, Rupa Goswami and, uh, uh, and Sanatana Goswami and all. So they like kind of, they just uh, uh, wrote uh, in their Vijay Patra. So they, these, these pundits, they would carry a Vijay Patra, whomever they argue and defeat. So they would take a signature from them. And uh, you know, that means they have accepted defeat. So you no, know, this Rupa Goswami told like, okay, no, I'm not interested. So if you want, wherever you want a signature, I'll, I'll put, I'm, I'm not uh, willing to have a debate. So, and in this way, like he would, uh, no, he would say like, uh, um, I'm, I'm not willing to defend in this kind of condition. So it is a personal, this one, it's a personal, a person has defeated or won over. So that's the, this one. So when Jiva Goswami, so the, uh, like, uh, uh, the other Goswami, like who's younger in uh, age, and uh, he saw that Sanatan Goswami and Rupa Goswami had signed this Vijay Patra of this big Vijay Pandit. So he could not able to tolerate. So he like um, just to defend, you no, know, his uh, uh, like uh, his uh, superiors. So he argued and he defeated him. Right. So in this way we can see that. So there is sufficient uh, examples are there in the scriptures. So when it comes to our own personal uh, defense, you no, know, a devotee says, okay, fine. No, I don't want to defend. Anybody wants to say anything about me, it's okay. No, I'm completely okay with that. So, but then when it, when it comes to the Lord, 
and the uh, devotees of the lord and the scriptures and the philosophy and things like that he doesn't accept any um, anything uh, very cheaply so sometimes uh, you no know, people say that oh sadhu means you should not fight you no know, you should not have any uh, this one you should not defend for anything you no know? so but then uh, that is not the scriptural this one so if there is uh, an offense towards uh, the lord or his devotees then uh, sadhu cannot uh, keep quiet so then he has to act very strongly right so the defense um, has to be applied as it is mentioned or as it is expected in the vaishnava achar you no know, like that it has to be so otherwise it will become extravagance an extravagance of defense anything that is not prescribed uh, anything that is not prescribed uh, in the scriptures if we do our focus in krishna consciousness will be disturbed we will not be able to practice krishna consciousness properly we will not be able to focus on the holy names properly right so defense is defense but then if we do it for ourselves we will be disturbed if we do it to protect the lord and his devotees and the philosophy and uh, the scriptures so then um, we will be able to chant better you know because we are following the scriptures right so the following of scriptures is very very important right so that activity which is done according to the scriptures will not disturb us you no know, be it anything you no know, be it uh, be it the sleeping be it the eating be it the mating be it the uh, defending whatever it is no if it is done according to the rules and regulations of the scriptures that will offer us such comfort that we will be able to um, like progress in krishna consciousness nicely right so that's the secret it's not giving up it's not accepting something it's regulating according to the scriptures no that's what we are trying to do okay text 18 yada vinit viniyatam chittam atmanyeva ஆக்டிவிட்டிஸ் <laughs> that means he doesn't have uh, you no know, too much agitating mental activities and then he becomes situated in transcendence that means his thoughts are not hovering on material plane his thoughts are hovering on spiritual plane right so then um, he is said to be well established in yoga but for the activities of yogis activity of the yogi are distinguished from those of an ordinary person by his characteristic cessation from all kinds of material desires of which sex is the chief a perfect yogi is so well disciplined in the activities of the mind that he can no longer be disturbed by any kind of material desires um this perfectional stage can automatically be attained by a person in krishna consciousness as stated in shrimad bhagavatam 9418 to 20 so this is a very very amazing piece of uh, uh, amazing set of shlokas which uh, you know even in the second chapter of bhagavad gita in the stita pratna uh, section like we uh, saw propad citing this uh, set of shlokas it is very very powerful you know we cannot underestimate this it's very powerful the things which are mentioned in the shloka is very simple you know anybody may take it so lightly and then uh, miss out uh, the uh, potential or miss out the great power that this thing has uh, but then if we put our uh, focus on this and if we put uh, uh what is that if we actually take it seriously it's really very powerful no by doing the simple steps which are mentioned in the shloka that this we are going to read now it is so powerful that we will see that no material desires are haunting us we will be like situated in transcendence we can attain this transcendence what this yogi is able to attain after a long long time of penance a krishna conscious person within very short time he can attain this right so that's the power of krishna consciousness so let's read this shloka no this is um, is very very auspicious and very powerful set of shlokas let's put our focus here and read savai mana krishna padara vindayor vacham shivai kuntha gunanu varnane 
ಕರೌ ಹರೇರ್ಮಂದಿರಮಾರ್ಜನಾಧೀಶು ಶ್ರುತಿ ಚಕಾರಾಚ್ಯುತ ಸಖೋದೇ ಮುಕುಂದಲಿಂಗಾಲಯ ದರ್ಶನೆ ದೃಶೌ ತದ್ವೃತ್ಯ ಗಾತ್ರ ಸ್ಪೃಶಂಗ ಸಂಗಮಂ ಪ್ರಾಣಂ ಚ ತತ್ಪಾದ ಸರೋಜ ಸೌರಭೇ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ತುಲಸ್ಯಾರಸನಾಂಥರ್ಪಿತೆ ಪಾದೌ ಹರೇ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಪದಾನುಸರ್ಪನೆ ಶಿರೋ ಹೃಷಿಕೇಶ ಪದಾಭಿವಂದನೆ ಕಾಮಂ ಚುದಾಶ್ ಕಾಮಂ ಚ ದಾಶ್ಯೆ ನ ತು ಕಾಮ ಕಾಮ್ಯಯ ಯಥೋತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಜನಾಶ್ರಯ ರಥಿ so this is savai manas krishna padara vindu yor so one's mind is engaged in thinking of the lotus feet of the lord and vacham shivai kunta gunanu varnane so the speech engaged in glorifying the lord so every day we can check whether we have done this thing you know whether we have sufficiently taken darshan of the lord you know uh, the, especially the lord's lotus feet so it is the lord's lotus feet is compared to uh, the uh, this one uh, um sambandha gyan so one who has uh, sufficiently nice meditation on the lotus feet of the lord his sambandha towards the lord is established and his material desires are completely vanquished and he is attracted to the lotus feet of the lord right and then we should also check have i spoken about the lord to anyone today no vacham shi vaikuntha gunanu varnane so i should speak about the guna and leela and the philosophy of the supreme lord right so we have to speak that is the perfection of the vacha you no know, the the speech and then karau harer mandira marjana dishu so did i clean the temple of the lord today and shrutim chakara achyuta sat kato daye so the ear did the ear hear about the supreme lord today and then mukundalingalaya darshane drishau so like uh, the seeing capacity should be used for taking darshan of the lord in the temple and then tad vrutya gatra sparashanga sangamam so like um, the sense of touch is used by touching the bodies of the devotees and then granam chatat pada saroja saurabe so by the smelling uh, should be used for smelling the flowers that are offered to the lord so in iskon temples like when we see when the aarti happens like you no know, the uh, when the flowers are offered to the lord so the flowers are passed on so that uh, people can you know uh, smell it right in the same way we can do it in the home also so the flowers that are offered to the lord we should collect them and then we should uh, smell them you no know? so after smelling we should not again keep it in the altar so it's like once we collect the flowers from the altar we should smell them right and then shrimat tulasya rasanam tadarpite we should taste the tulsi leaves that are offered to the lotus feet of the lord or even you no know, offered in the bhoga preparations and then offered to the lord so when it comes we should specially take you no know, tulsi leaves and we should taste them no that has so much potency to give krishna consciousness and then pado hare kshetra padanu sarpane the legs should be used for walking towards the temple and shiro rishikesha padavi vandane the head should be used to offer obeisances to the lord right so we should offer pranams to the lord by using our head and then kamam chadashye natu kama kamyaye so the desire you no know, kamam chadashye like no we should uh, we should uh, use our desires to um, we should have desires as a servant of the lord you no know? for service of the lord we should have desires and then natu kama kamye like not for sense gratification right yato tama shloka janashraya arati so this is the perfect way you no know, the king ambrish used to follow let's read the translation here king ambrish first of all engaged his mind on the lotus feet of the of lord krishna then uh, one after another he engaged his words in describing the transcendental qualities of the lord his hands in mopping the temple of the lord his ears in hearing the activities of the lord his eyes in seeing the transcendental forms of the lord his body in touching the bodies of the devotees his sense of smell and smelling the scents of the lotus flowers offered to the lord his tongue in tasting the tulsi leaves offered at the lotus feet of the lord his legs in going to the places of pilgrimage and the temples of the lord his head in offering obeisances unto the lord and his desires in executing the mission of the lord all these transcendental activities are quite benefiting quite befitting a pure devotee this transcendental stage may be inexpressibly uh, inexpressible subjectively by the followers of the impersonalist path but it becomes very easy and practical for a person in krishna consciousness and it is apparent in the above description of the engagements of maharaj ambrish unless the mind is fixed on the lotus feet of lord by constant remembrance such transcendental engagements are not practical 
in the dev devotional service of the lord therefore these prescribed activities are called archana or engaging all the senses in the service of the lord so when we do the archana vidhi when we do uh, the aarati and archana of the lord automatically all our senses becomes engaged in the service of the lord the senses and the mind require engagements simply abnegation is not practical therefore for people in general especially those who are not in the renounced order of life transcendental engagement of the senses and the mind as described above is the perfect process for transcendental achievement which is called yukta in the bhagavad gita it's it's very very simple you know basically we have to see all of our senses how it is nicely engaged in the service of the lord and i would recommend this you know every devotee should memorize this set of shloka and uh, this is kind of a ready reckoner every day you know before uh, retiring you no know, for the day like we should uh, you no know, chant the shlokas and then we should see that have i done all these things so if we have done so then shila proper this mentioning in the second chapter you no know, when he was citing this he was mentioning this is so very powerful you no know, we will become you no know, krishna conscious so very soon just by doing this so like um, you no know, i think uh, devotees should memorize this and uh, they should uh, chant it uh before the end of the day and then um, you no know, a uh, see uh just offer a mental tick to one of each and every one of these items right so who all want to do this you, know, you can actually you know uh, put down saying that uh, you know you will be able to do it and if you want to do it how long time you will take to memorize this you, know, you can just put it on the chat box so uh, you know that will kind of uh, once you say you have to do it so it will kind of uh, no offer some kind of uh, this one okay 15 days that's nice that's nice and uh, if somebody has already done it memorize that's also very nice you can just say like i have done it and if somebody is like willing to do it and not willing to do it everybody must do it it's really really very nice right so all of you can take one commitment you no know? any time you want you can take but then you should memorize these three set of shlokas okay 20 days okay that's good hmm okay so nice so you can keep posting in um i'll just move forward a little bit um we have a little less time now so i would strongly recommend everyone here you no know, please memorize this set of shlokas it's very very important text 19 yatha dipo niva nivatasto negate sopamasmrutha yogino yata chittasya yunjato yoga matmanah okay as a lamp in a windless place does not waver so the transcendentalist whose mind is controlled remains always steady in his meditation on the transcendent self right so this is a very amazing uh, example that is given hmm. as a lamp in a windless place does not waver so the transcendentalist whose mind is controlled remains always steady in his meditation on the transcendental self right so this is uh, the mind of a person is not moving here and there like he it is just you no know, it is just fixed in the transcendence right a truly krishna conscious person always absorbed in transcendence in constant undisturbed meditation on his uh, worshipable lord is as steady as a lamp in a windless place okay okay so uh, one more thing just uh, tomorrow uh, i will not be available at the same time um, so i was just thinking to cancel the class but then now i was just thinking one nice engagement can be there um so this set of shlokas yes like i will pass it on in the group also and um, no tomorrow devotees can assemble here now i would uh, request one of you to take a lead uh, so if any one of you would like to take lead tomorrow i will uh, share the host uh, key to the, to you you can actually become the host and conduct the program and the program would be just to recite this shloka and i would uh, i will give some more set of shlokas so tomorrow will be a shloka recitation day where uh, you no know, you all will come together and then recite these shlokas and the format would be that uh, you no know, uh, like few a few of you i'll uh, select uh, you know who will recite the shlokas and then um, the others can uh, follow 
and then you know anyone would like to recite so they will also be given opportunity to recite uh, apart from the selected ones and uh, you know you can uh, once you have confidence in reciting that shloka so you can actually raise hands then you will be offered an option um, like uh, to chant the shloka so it is uh, you know for all of your information um, this shloka memorization is um, is kind of uh, uh, it's a very nice process if you see like many shlokas which i am quoting uh, which i would have memorized a long back and then just memory of just one word the first word just if i trigger the first word the whole thing comes that's the beauty of the sanskrit language you know it's so systematic it's so well constructed so rhythmic that uh, you no know, it it just sticks on to us you no know, once it is memorized it just sticks on to us and you will be surprised like uh, how much uh, how nice these shlokas are so once it is memorized right so we will uh, have a nice uh, you know our chaitanya karuna sindhu prabhu is there probably uh, if he is uh, having um, time tomorrow he can lead um, and he is a quite senior person and then uh, we have sarvanath prabhu is also there and sarveshwar prabhu is there so anyone who would like to lead you no know, you can just let me know uh, so tomorrow we can uh, do this uh, shlokas and then um, uh, we can actually uh, chant one chapter of bhagavad gita also like um, probably the 12th chapter of bhagavad gita it's very very important so we can chant that shlokas uh, so i'll uh, i'll i'll just uh, uh, what is it uh, discuss it after the class in case if any one of you are ready like you can you can actually you know uh, put it in the chat box i can um, and also i'll coordinate with you later so it's very very important these shloka memorizations are so powerful you now once we do the shloka memorization we'll see that our mind gets on to uh, you no know, mode of goodness and if we regularly chant the shlokas you no know, that uh, that gives a lot of lot of uh, benefit material benefit also right so materially like we will be more focused our intelligence will become sharpened and memory capacity will improve and things like that and spiritually these shlokas are loaded with you no know, directions for our spiritual advancement so this previous shloka that we read every single word is practical every single word that we can you know we uh, discussed about it's practical to be implemented immediately and we will see the result very very quickly and it's so simple also right so it's very very powerful shloka memorization so tomorrow uh, please don't miss uh, so all of you uh, join together and then um, uh, if you i guarantee you if tomorrow the way i am scheduling the this one way i am going to um, like uh, make this uh, uh, session to go on if you join tomorrow itself you will memorize this three shlokas it's very very easy you know it's a mechanical process it's nothing to do with our capacity or anything like that it's just a mechanical process we just tomorrow session if you join at the end of tomorrow session you will have all these three shlokas memorized so that's guaranteed right so we will we will try to do that you no know, tomorrow okay okay so text 20 to 23 yatro यत्रो परमते चित्तं निरुद्धं योग सेवया यत्र चैवात्मनात्मानं पश्यन् आत्मनि तुष्यति सुखं आत्यंतिकं यत्तत् बुद्धि ग्राह्यं मतिंद्रियं व्यक्ति यत्र न चैवायं स्थितश्चलति तत्वतः यं लब्ध्वा चापरं लाभं मन्यते नादिकं तत यस्मिन् स्थितो न दुःखेन गुरुनापि विचाल्यते तं विद्या तम विद्या दुख संयोग वियोगम योग संजितम के सो इन द स्टेज ऑफ परफेक्शन कॉल्ड ट्रांस और समाधि वंस माइंड इज कंप्लीटली रिस्ट्रेंड फ्रॉम मटेरियल मेंटल एक्टिविटीज बाय प्रैक्टिस ऑफ योगा दिस परफेक्शन इज कैरेक्टराइज्ड बाय दिस परफेक्शन इज characterized by one's ability to see the self by the pure mind and to relish and rejoice in the self in that joyous state one is situated in boundless transcendental happiness realized through transcendental senses established thus one never departs from the truth and upon gaining things he um, upon gaining this he thinks there is no greater gain being situated in such a position one is never shaken even in the midst of greatest difficulty this indeed is actual freedom from all miseries arising from material contacts okay purport 
by practice of yoga one becomes gradually detached from material concepts this is the primary characteristic of yoga yoga principle and after this one becomes situated in trance or samadhi which means that the yogi realizes the super soul through transcendental mind and intelligence without any of the misgivings of identifying the self with super self right so you no know, yoga practices it gradually detaches one from the material concept and this is the primary characteristic of yoga principle if somebody is telling that i am doing yoga and then he is having all bad habits and things like that so then we can understand what kind of yoga he is doing right so okay and then uh, after this one is one becomes situated in trance or samadhi which means the yogi realizes the super soul through transcendental mind and intelligence without any of the misgivings of identifying the self with the super self yoga practice is more or less based on the principles of patanjali system some unauthorized commentators try to identify the individual soul with the super soul and the monists think this is this to be liberation no but they do not understand the real purpose of patanjali system of yoga there is an acceptance of transcendental pleasure in the patanjali system but the monists do not accept this transcendental pleasure out of fear of jeopardizing the theory of oneness right so there is uh, you no know, this uh, this uh, the monist or the mayavadis so they want to merge in the existence of the brahman and um, for them you no know, uh, meditating on the super soul and then um, like uh, having that pleasurable exchange of devotional service to the lord and things like that no they don't want to enter into that because they fear they may lose their uh, uh, no they they may lose the uh, this one uh, merging into that uh, supreme brahman so out of fear of like uh, uh, you no know, getting away from the oneness so they don't even enjoy the pleasure that is available in this whole process of executing all this uh, various uh, you no know, krishna conscious activities right not even the meditational activities the duality of knowledge and knower is not accepted by the non dualist but in the verse uh, in this verse transcendental pleasure realized through transcendental senses is accepted so that means uh, like uh, a person who is situated in trance he is experiencing bliss according to uh, the uh, this one according to the monist or non dualist or the mayavadis so they don't Uh, for them any any happiness or distress experienced you know means you you are in a material consciousness spiritual consciousness means no happiness no distress it's all you no know, it's all uh, what is that um, you no know, uh, without any emotions you no know, that's what is their conception of uh, spiritual advancement right so you know when they read these sections of uh, getting pleasure in the spiritual uh, path so they say like you are getting pleasure that means you are material you are experiencing something material all the emotions positive negative everything is they consider to be like uh, material and then um, you no know, they they consider only uh, nirvana brahma nirvana they call so and uh, no happiness no distress it's all um, i don't know what to say like it's all stale pale uh, no uh, emptiness no that's what they actually look for so they miss out of all these pleasures that is available in the process and this is corroborated by patanjali muni the famous exponent of yoga system the great sage declares in the yoga sutras purushartha sunyanam uh, gunanam prati pravash pravasavah kaivalyam swarupa pratishta cha uh, chiti shakti riti uh, so the chiti shakti um, or internal potency is transcendental purushartha means material religiosity economic development sense gratification and at the end attempt to become one with the supreme so uh, this is dharma artha kama and moksha so this is generally called as purushartha okay this oneness with the supreme is called kaivalyam by the monist but according to patanjali this kaivalyam is an internal or transcendental potency by which the living entity become aware of its constitutional position in the words of lord chaitanya the state of affair is called cheto darpanam arjanam or clearance of the impure mirror of the mind this clearance is actually liberation or bhava mahava bhava uh, sorry bhava maha dava dava agni nirvapanam 
So the theory of Nirvana also preliminarily, uh, primarily corresponds with this principle. So that means Nirvana means what? Giving up the material things and being aware of spiritual things. According to the Mayavadis, it is only giving up the material things and there is nothing spiritual over there. So it's just one Brahman without any quality, without any emotions, without any expressions. And they just uh, think about that. So the moment there is a variety, there is some emotions and things like that, immediately they'll say, oh, this is all material, no? Then, uh, so that's their problem. So here, uh, but the Krishna consciousness, we see that uh, you know, the material things have variety, the spiritual things also have variety. It's not that anything that has variety is material. So even spiritual things have variety and we have to become aware of the spiritual variety, right? So in Bhagavatam 2.10, Six, it is called Swarupena Vivastitihi. Muktir Hitva Anyata Rupam Swarupena Vivastitihi. Right? So Mukti means what? Hitva means giving up. Mukti means Hitva Anyata Rupam. So to give up all other Anyata Rupam and then um, Swarupena Vivastitihi. So to, uh, to be reminded, in, uh, to be situated in one's own Swarupa, that is to be servant of the Lord. So Vyavastitihi. So that is called Mukti. No, Kaivalyam or Mukti or Nirvana means uh, not giving up everything and then become zero. It is uh, to become situated in our original Swarupa that is to be a servant of the Lord. Right? So the Bhagavad Gita also confirms the situation in this verse. And uh, after Nirvana or material cessation, there is the manifestation of spiritual activities or devotional service to the Lord known as Krishna Consciousness. In the words of Bhagavatam, Swarupena Vavastitihi, this is the real life of living entity. Maya or illusion is the condition of spiritual life contaminated by material infection. Liberation from material infection does not mean destruction of original, eternal position of living entity. Patanjali also accepts this by his words, Kaivalyam Swarupa Pratishta. No, Kaivalyam Swarupa Pratishta. He is not telling Kaivalyam means to become zero. No, so Kaivalyam Swarupa Pratishta Vachiti Shakti Riti. No, so that means uh, to establish in the transcendental pleasure and to be established in our original Swarupa. So, Rupa, the word Rupa is used, the word Swarupa is used. So, it's very, very clear that we are not going to become zero after attaining liberation. We will still be a person, we will still have emotions, but it will all be spiritual. Right? So, this Chit Shakti, Chiti Shakti or transcendental pleasure is real life. This is confirmed in Vedanta Sutra as Ananda Mayo Abhyasat. So the Supreme Brahman is full of Ananda. So that means there is uh, some uh, emotions that is there, right? So this natural transcendental pleasure is the ultimate goal of yoga and is easily achieved by execution of devotional service or Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga will be vividly described in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita onwards, no, 7th, 12th is Bhakti Yoga. In the yoga system, as described in this chapter, there are two kinds of Samadhi called sam, uh, Sampragnata Samadhi and Asapragnata Samadhi. When one becomes situated in the transcendental position by various philosophical researchers, he is said to have achieved Sampragnata Samadhi. Samadhi. In the Asapragnata Samadhi, there is no longer any connection with the mundane pleasure for one is then transcendental to all sort of happiness derived from the senses. When the yogi is once situated in that transcendental position, he is never shaken from it. Unless the yogi is able to reach this position, he is unsuccessful. Today's so-called yoga practice, which involves various sense pleasure, is contradictory. A yogi indulges, indulging in sex and intoxication is a mockery. Even those yogis who are attached to, uh, uh, attracted by the siddhis, perfections in the process of yoga, are not perfectly situated. If yogis are attracted by the byproducts of yoga, then they cannot attain the stage of perfection as is stated in this verse. Persons, therefore, indulging in a make show practice of gymnastic feats or siddhis should know that the aim of yoga is lost in that way. The best practice of yoga in this uh, age is Krishna consciousness which is not baffling. A Krishna conscious person is so happy in his occupation that he does not aspire after any other happiness. There are many impediments, especially in this age of hypocrisy. 
to practice of hatha yoga dhyana yoga jnana yoga but there is no such problem in executing karma or bhakti yoga right as long as the material body exists uh, one has to meet the demands of the body namely eating sleeping defending and mating but a person who is pure bhakti yoga, uh, person in pure bhakti yoga uh, or krishna consciousness does not arouse the senses while meeting the demands of the body rather he accepts the bare necessities of life making the best use of a bad bargain so what is a bad bargain so we have taken birth in this world that is a bad bargain and uh, no so but then the best use is that we can use it for krishna conscious activities okay making the best use of bad bargain and enjoy transcendental happiness in krishna consciousness he is callous towards incidental occurrences such as uh, accidents disease scarcity and even the death of a most dear relative but he is always alert to execute his duties in krishna consciousness or bhakti yoga accidents never deviate him from his duty as stated in bhagavad gita agama payino anitya stham titikshva swabharata he endures all such incidental occurrences because he knows that they come and go and do not affect his duties in this way he achieves the highest perfection in yoga practice okay so that's nice and uh, there is some this one uh, thank you for the suggestion to memorize the shlokas i will try my best you had suggested to learn ishwara parama krishna as well may be we can revise that as well tomorrow if possible yeah okay we can do that so that shloka also we will include okay so this is uh, uh, we will uh, like call off the session today uh, here and uh, thank you all very much for joining and tomorrow please be there for this uh, shloka memorization session um, and uh, now i will select one of uh, one of the participants as the coordinator and uh, it's quite easy it's very very easy memorization of shlokas and once you do it you will be able to memorize maybe 2 3 4 5 shlokas a day you no know? that's how much uh, you no know, you can do uh, so one devotee was mentioning he is so much uh, engrossed in shloka memorization he can do up till 50 shlokas a day so that's like you no know, massive <laughs> so we can um, we can just imagine like one two shlokas so easily we can memorize in a day so and then recitation of these shlokas whichever shlokas we memorize we should recite them every day you know we should make a note of them and we should recite them every day and it will become really very powerful this practice is really really very powerful so i invite all of you tomorrow for uh, this loka memorization session hari krishna shila prabhupad ki jai gaurav bhakta vrinda ki jai shila prabhupad book marathon ki jai hari krishna